How's it going everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well and you've been enjoying the content. So what are we going to be talking about in today's episode? Well, today I'm going to be taking you through some popular questions that we just get asked on a regular basis. So I thought, you know what, it'd be a great opportunity to do it today as I'm revamping some content for Falcon and I've just got to run a few errands first. So just along the way throughout the day, we'll answer those questions. So the first question I want to go into is demo. How long should I stay on a demo? Well, let's, let's get into that one. So we're gonna run a few errands today. And essentially with demo, this is, a, personally I've never traded demo, so I, I'm not gonna recommend or endorse it that much. And really, demo should only really be for just a, a short period of time for you to learn the software. It's only really at a point where you just wanna learn how to place trades. And the reason why you don't want to stay on demo for too long, and this is a question that just literally comes through so much, how long should I stay on demo? But the truth is, the most limited amount of time as possible because nowadays you can start off with, with a trading account with such a small amount, like a couple of hundred pounds, and you can get a real emotion involved in the market. And the quicker you do that, the better. So even if it's, let's say, risking four pound on a trade, for example, that's not really gonna put you out on the streets, right? You, you can afford that even when you're starting off. So the best thing, get real emotion involved in the market because you'll just take it more serious. And the last thing you wanna do is, you know, I've seen people before where they stand demo for like a couple of years, almost like it's, this isn't a university degree or anything like that. And they stand it for way too long. And then guess what? When they come into real money involved in the market, they get very emotional. So the best thing you can do is train your mind early on. So next question is thoughts on signal providers. So. This is, of course is a common question, a very popular question that comes into the industry as a whole. Think about it, there's no scale in that. So firstly, is it a good idea for you to get signals? In my personal opinion, no, right? And there's lots of reasons, and I could do a whole episode on this, but I'll just do a short answer first. And if you want more in-depth stuff, then leave a comment and I'll leave some, and I'll make another video. But essentially think of it like this. Let's say for example, you've got, let's say these signals are from a trader that's a good trader, and they send you out signals and they happen to be doing well and you're trading, let's say, a couple of thousand pounds, five or 10K. And what happens at scale there? Let's say, for example, you then get an injection of capital. Let's say you've got 100, more, etc. Where's the scale in that? And what I mean by that, are you gonna confidently rely on someone sending you those signals, for example, on bigger capital? You might think you are now because the money doesn't really mean too much to you because it's just a small amount. But when, you're, when you have more money in your account, are you gonna rely on that? Probably not. And think about it. How many, how many success stories have you heard of examples of success stories where, you know, someone's kind of said to you, you know, I took the signal service and, you know, I became successful. It doesn't happen, does it? There's no examples of that because what world do you guys and girls live in where you think people are just going to give you free money? And this is to the people that authentically believe that you're just going to go and get signals and you're just going to earn while you learn and that kind of stuff. That's to suck you in. Signal, signal providers are doing you a disservice because they're teaching you to rely. They're not teaching you to be independent. And it doesn't matter what people say to you, it's teaching you to be unstable. Where if you focus on becoming the asset, which is what we believe in a lot, you become independent. You don't need to rely on anyone. Well, if that signal provider goes down tomorrow, then what? You've got, let's say you're relying on that to generate you an income. And let's just put in, for example, most of the ones, they're not gonna get you any sort of profit anyway, but let's say, for example, it does. And then that person or that signal provider, I don't know, what if they get, hit by a car for example and they go into hospital and you're waiting there for your signals to rely on them i doubt you're going to be able to fend for yourself and that's the most important thing you've got to think about it we live in a world where no one's just going to hand you money and make you rich you have to go and earn it for yourself so don't do yourself a disservice and rely on others focus on becoming the asset acquiring the skill yourself and like i said i could go into so many areas of it but i don't think it serves you not longer term and even shorter term it doesn't it just makes you unstable and at the end of the day you're just going to be looking thinking right here's the entry price sell price etc and you're not going to be confident and then longer term you're going to be frustrated focus on yourself and become the asset and learn the skill if you really want to make it happen so next question is how do i reduce fomo this is a question that get asked a lot, right? How do we reduce the fear of missing out? Or well, quite simply, where it comes from, if you look at the root of it, it's a lack of clarity. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you don't know the possible outcomes, then you're gonna constantly feel like, for example, we're looking at Euro Pound here. There's a big sale coming on Euro Pound, right? 
If you've got FOMO from that, that's because you don't understand the structures, the patterns, the strategy, wherever you're trading. And FOMO is true with every strategy, right? It comes from a lack of clarity. So the majority of the time, I'm not saying all the time, the majority of the time, the reason why you feel this FOMO, this fear of missing out, is because you haven't fully understood the possibility and the strategy that you're trading. So how do you have a practical step to, let's say, get to the root of it? Backtesting. Why do I say that? Because if you backtested, let's say we look at these structures, for example, and you've backtested, you've then seen that, right, within this type of scenario, we usually get one, two, three, four, five, or seven typical entry points that we can get involved in that particular leg, that impulsive leg, for example. So then when you're looking at a trade and you feel that, you know, there's emotions of fear of missing out, you're then, after you've backtested over and over again, it becomes subconscious and you're going to say to yourself, well, hold on a minute. In this leg, I normally get five, six, seven types of entries. So do I really need to jump in early from the fear of missing out? Or am I just jumping in early because I don't really understand what's going to happen next? Because the reason why you want to jump in is because you think that if you don't get that trade, that there's not going to be another one again for you. But that would be like going to get a bus, for example, and just turning up there and thinking, well, if you only thought there was one bus a day, what's the chances of you having that fear all the time? Well, I'm going to miss the bus. You either get there too early or too late and you end up getting hurt. Well, imagine if you knew and you looked at the timetable and saw, well, well, there's a bus every 20 minutes or a bus every half hour. You're not going to have that fear anymore. So it comes from a lack of knowing, a lack of clarity, a lack of understanding. The best thing that you can do with this uncertainty that you feel is go and back test. Go and back test and understand the true capabilities of your current strategy, what you're trading. I can almost guarantee you that that fear of missing out will naturally reduce. What can you do to take it one step further? Well, you've back tested, now you know the possible outcomes. What are you gonna to do to actually be proactive within the market rather than react? The reason why a lot of people have the fear of missing out as well is because they're very reactive. They let the market happen to them. And they think, oh, it's happening now, I need to jump in, I've got this fear. So what do you do, you forecast. Why is forecasting so important? Well, think of it like this. Let's say I've, we've back tested, we've then established this impulsive leg. This will usually give us five, seven, six entries, whatever it may be, right? We're looking at it and thinking, well, I know that, but I've still got a little bit of this fear of missing out because I still feel a bit uncertain. Okay, I get that. So we forecast. And the reason we do that is that we're mapping out these scenarios that can play out based off of this structure, right? We focus on Falcon, we focus on patterns. Remember things like trend lines, trend lines are subjective. We're not trading trend lines. We're focusing on patterns. Why do we focus on patterns? Because they have percentage completions. They repeat themselves. This is something that we can rely on, right? So we can look at that and say, well, this particular pattern in this scenario has either a one, two, three, third touch. We look at the third touch of the outer structure, or there may be a double top within the pattern. That can be the override that we're looking at. And then we'll have entry criteria, whether we're waiting for a reduced risk entry, a risk entry, et cetera. Falcon community, you know what I'm talking about. But you can relay this back to all strategies. What most people do is they see that and think, well, I just need to jump in. They don't really have a trading plan to follow and they don't have their entry criteria. Where if you're forecasting and saying, well, this is my plan, I'm forecasting where if this happens, I'll take it based off of this type of criteria. Where if I don't get that set up, because it doesn't have to complete that pattern, we might get a different you know, entry point. If this happens, I'm gonna do this. What does that do? Subconsciously, you're training your mind to be proactive. You wanna have the smallest amount of thinking time when you're placing a trade as possible. Your thinking should already be done. You should already know this in advance. Like Pound Swiss, for example, I already know exactly what I'm gonna do, how I'm going to do it, where I'm gonna do it, right? We're looking for the buy on Pound Swiss. We're looking for the sell on Euro Pound. There's other trades that we're looking at as well, but we already know how we're going to deal with it. And the only way we do that is by forecasting. But the root of it starts with backtesting. You backtest, you understand the possibilities. The fear of missing out reduces. You then take it one step further because you're not just gonna backtest and suddenly the fear of missing out just gonna go. It's always gonna be there to a small element, but you just wanna reduce it and reduce it as much as possible. Then you forecast. I guarantee you, you're gonna to start to feel more confident, you're gonna have more clarity, and you're just gonna feel good about trading as a whole because you're not gonna have the fear as much because you'll realize, well, if that entry doesn't go, I can wait for this one. Or it usually does this and this and that, and I'll enter here as well. And then that gives you clarity. So the root of it comes from a lack of clarity and I've just given you the practical steps. So let me know how you get on. Once you try that, I'm confident you're gonna love it. So next question is about cryptocurrency. So trading in cryptocurrency with Falcon Star. Essentially, short answer is yes. I've got BTC, USD behind me and you can do that. So a lot of people in the Falcon community 
they day trade cryptocurrency using the Falcon style. And I found that BTC USD more so than anything else responds the most. More and more it's responding to structure and even in the most recent price action, the bear flags, bull flags, a lot of patterns, responding really well. It's also good to be able to establish value areas for those of you that hold it for the longer term as well. I wouldn't say it's ever gonna be you know, a big focus for us because we're predominantly focusing on Forex, but it's nice to have that as well as having a few other you know, variations to be able to trade. Sometimes when something's not materializing in the week, you might have something shaping up on crypto on BTC USD, for example, you could take advantage of a short-term position or give you an idea of whether you want to buy for the long-term hold as well. So for those of you that are interested in thinking about can you use it or if you want to get involved in Falcon and use that with a Falcon style, short answer is yes, you can. So next question is how to trade around work and what was your routine like before you went full time? Great question. So a lot of people want to know this, essentially utilizing things like entry orders. So what I mean by that is we've all been in situations where at work, you can't necessarily be by the screen to place the trade, right? Well, it really depends on your strategy. You know, if you're entering at market live and things like that, it's a little bit different, but a lot of times we're waiting for patterns to complete, for example. So I would know within a period of time, let's say, we'd corrected for let's say six, eight hours, 10 hours, for example, I would see a particular pattern and then I would set the entry. Now, I could not be or utilize my phone, if you like, for maybe four hours and still not be triggered into the trade. Or I could go back to my phone where I'm going to the toilet and things like that. We all know that how many people check their phones in the toilets, I mean, especially if you're a trader, you'll realize that, well, yes, I did get triggered into the trade, but there's loads of times where I'd put the entry on, I'd finish work and I'm still not triggered into the trade. I was also fortunate that because I was up really, really early, I used to catch the first two, two and a half hours of the London session. So I was able to, when that volatility was kicking in, I could take advantage of opportunities and things like that. But the one thing I want to address here is that not everybody's goal is to go full time. I mean, I could argue that I'm not a full time trader. And the reason why I say that is that I work on other projects. I have work on Falcon, I work on property. You know, I'm not sitting by the screen all day looking at the charts. So this idea of wanting to be just a full-time trader and a full-time trader alone is not so much a myth, but it's not as glamorous as what people make out. You're gonna wanna find something. That's why I always say that for us at Falcon, it's not about getting you to just be full-time. Some of you love your jobs and you do very rewarding jobs and there's nothing wrong with that. And just because you're working doesn't mean that your returns are going to suffer. That's what I think people need to realize because when I did actually go full-time and didn't have very many projects on the go, my returns actually suffered for a little period of time because I had pretty much no routine. I was waking up really late and I was staying up really, really late and ended up trading, trading the Asian session a lot as well. Honestly, my routine completely went out of whack and it was, uh, it was really frustrating because I just, you know, I couldn't get out of it because I knew that, look, I can wake up when I want and no matter what, I'd still wake up late until I developed the discipline again and then started focusing on other projects. So what I personally found is that the busier I am, being productive busy, not being a busy fool, but being busy and productive, the better returns that I got. And I think that's true for every successful trader. I think you need to understand that the goal shouldn't always to be to go to full time and realize that just having more time in front of the charts doesn't mean more profit, more money. The same way taking more trades doesn't mean more money. So you need to realize that, think about what you do and if you love your job, that's fine, you can work around it. You know, you can check your phone in the toilet, you can set your entry orders, you can adapt. So the short answer, well, the longer answer to the question essentially is, and again, this is a subject that we wanna do a whole video on, but I wanted to touch on it very briefly because it's always on people's minds. Never allow your current situation to use that as an excuse for maybe not hitting what you need to hit. Because a lot of people, they transition, like myself, you transition out of that and you're able to adapt. Use your nine to five job, whatever you're doing as leverage. Leverage that as almost like, oh, hold on a minute, I'm almost getting paid to learn how to trade. See it as a good thing and realize that the goal should be to wanna to be the best trader that you can be. But the best things that I personally utilized was just being proactive, forecasting, setting entry orders. So I would allow the market to happen. If it triggered me in, perfect. If it didn't, then I would you know, reassess that trade. So I hope that helps. Is trading hard work or intelligent? So essentially the question, is it about just hard work or is it intelligence? It's definitely not about intelligence. And this is where people get it really, really wrong and their, their egos get bruised a lot. The amount of people that I've spoken to that are you know, academically intelligent, you know, and or they have higher IQs and things like that, they will look at somebody else that they would regard as let's say not as intelligent as them. They will see them succeeding and sometimes even in the community this might happen, you'll see them succeed and you'll see he or she succeeding thinking, I'm more intelligent than him and her. How on earth 
as that person progressed to full time or taking on the first investment quicker than me. I know all of this stuff. And this is where you let your ego get involved. Trading is not just about intelligence. Of course, you have to have some level of intelligence, right? But it's more about habits, good habits that anybody can learn and processes. Now, you don't need to be incredibly intelligent to be a great trader. It's about understanding having your processes. You know, I'm dyslexic. I struggle with so many different things, right? But I never let that allow, I never allow that to see that as a weakness. I use it as a strength and I leverage that. But then if it means that I have to work harder on having processes that some people might find really easy to do, right? And I might find it slightly difficult, but I don't care, I don't dwell on that. I think, right, how can I have better processes? Because usually great processes are followed by great outcomes. So as a trader, don't worry about your intelligence. That doesn't mean anything in this game. This is open playing field, right? You're not judged on how tall you are, what color of your skin you are, what race, what upbringing you are. It's level playing field. It's about are you willing to put the work in and have those great processes? So I believe it's a combination of hard work, smart work, and having great processes. The better your process, the better your outcome. So do not judge yourself and think, so how many people that I speak to and think, well, I can't do that because you know I'm not that quite enough savvy with computers. I mean, what does that even mean? You don't have to be savvy with computers. You're you know, filling out a deal ticket. It's one of the most simple things that you can do. Even chart work on TradingView and things like that, you can learn that very, very quickly. So never allow that as an excuse and think that you need to be more intelligent to be a successful trader. Self-pitying, anybody can do it if you have hard work, smart work, and have the right processes and the right guidance. So I hope that helps. So last question, guys and girls, how to master your emotions in trading? See, I think this is a, this is a question that, that everybody wants to know, you know, how can I master my emotions in trading? And we always want to master that. We always want to control. People always often say, say, you know, how can I control my emotions in trading? But the truth is, when you remove the desire to want to control everything, things start to fall in place. So essentially, I prefer the word manage over control because when you're constantly trying to control something, it never normally works out right because we can never have full control. For example, you know, trying to control your emotions in training is like trying to control a tornado. It's very difficult, so it's about adapting. When you're focusing on mind management, for example, you can then manage your mindset. So a great book that I always recommend is, of course, The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters. I highly recommend that you do that because you're gonna focus on mind management. Now, the reason why I say this is because this, qu this question and this answer, there is, this isn't one size fits all because everybody that has struggling, they, have, they struggle with their emotions could be from a number of things. It could be your upbringing, could be your beliefs about money, could be who you're surrounded by. So many different things could influence the way that you, you know, deal with your emotions. And the best way that I like to think about it is, well, learn to manage your emotions rather than control them. And a practical step would be, of course, the book. You know, I've recommended that book a lot of times for a reason. It's been a big pillar in my life. Learning how to manage your emotions is the most important thing because when you can manage your mind, it's far more sustainable. Think about just life in general. What if something happens to you in five years time and you think, you know, I've, I've got like full control over my emotions, that that's a fantasy that's never actually going to happen. But if you can learn to manage your mind and have practical things in place to do that, then it will happen as a side effect. So for example, if you're feeling emotional about you know, the fear of missing out like a cupboard or the fear of being wrong and things like that, focusing on having great processes and having more clarity in your strategies and things like that, naturally you'll have more clarity. The fear of missing out, like I mentioned previously in this video, you'll, you'll have more clarity and you won't have as much fear of missing out then you've got more stability within your emotions. So go back to the root of it, rather than focusing on how can I control my emotions, how can I master emotions, you tend to just focus on that and you never get there. Focus on processes. I found that to help me personally and so many people within you know, the Falcon community and just successful traders as a whole that even trade other strategies. So guys and girls, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. I thought like today, we're currently going just to give you an insight into what we're doing at the moment. So we're going through a revamp of going through a lot of our content, changing things up adding a lot of things as well that we believe is gonna bridge that gap even closer towards consistency. So we're very, very excited for that. And I just wanna take this opportunity to firstly say, you know, the channel has been open for a while now and the feedback you guys and girls give is just incredible. I honestly appreciate it, you know, and what I would love is that always remember to like, comment and subscribe, of course, because we wanna keep you in the loop as much as possible and everything that we've got coming out. But what I would love is that what, if you used to think about a few topics, whether it's one topic, three, two topic or three, what topics would you love us to cover? 
And it could just be, it doesn't always have to be trading related, it could be mindset related, because you know, being a great trader is not about just focusing on trading. You know, If you actually switched on, you realize that a lot of it is to do with the mindset. Anybody can learn the technicals quite quickly. I don't mean within a week or anything like that, but the technicals can be learned a lot quicker. The mindset is a forever process. It's about having the right guidance and being mentored along the way, which is why we believe in mentorship rather than just giving a static course. That's not gonna take you very far. So what's those topics that you would love to cover? You know, as a beginner, is there something that you know, wish that you knew when you first started? Please share it with us, I would love to know, and we'll be making more videos on it. But guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this, have an incredible week ahead, and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.